Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of, of Job, chapter 35. Now, if you're familiar with Job, uh, as I hope you are, Job is a, uh, a man who experiences a great deal of affliction, all because the enemy of our souls has tried to accuse God of blessing him so that he will give God praise. And God says that's not the case. And so he gives Satan permission to afflict Job, and he watches how Job uh, expresses his own frustration and his own confusion. But it's interesting that Job never denies the Lord. He, he is bewildered. He is uncertain. But he always recognizes that he knows in his heart of hearts that there is nothing that he has done in order to deserve the kind of affliction and trials that Satan brings upon him that way. So the whole of the book of Job is the, is the discourses that happen between Job and his friends, his friends who are trying to con, uh, uh, express to Job that, uh, that, that Job must have done something wrong in the past, and that's why God is afflicting him right now. Now, we understand, we recognize that that's not the case. We've read the first couple chapters. But I find it's interesting as we get into chapter 38, and I know that in this I'm looking at verse uh, chapter 35, but in chapter 38, God finally uh, communicates to Job. And he asks the question in verse 2, Who is this? that darkens counsel by words without knowledge. Now, I've debated with people who it is that is expressing these words without knowledge. That is spoken to Job. Is it Job's words that are without knowledge? Or are there, are this, is this, the, uh, this what everybody who is counseling Job is saying? Well, we find in chapter 35, and that's where our, our text is today, we find the same phrase in verse 16. He says, Job opens his mouth in empty talk. He multiplies words without knowledge. Now, this particular statement is made by one of the friends of Job, not Job himself. So, uh, later on, God is going to be speaking to Job, and he, sp and he uses that same phrase. My question, and I haven't resolved it in my mind, you may not resolve it in yours, is the question of whose words is God calling uh, words without knowledge. Now, I, I do suggest to you that where Job may have been speaking some of those words without knowledge himself in all of his frustration, certainly the, uh, the counsel of these friends, the three friends initially and then the younger man that spoke this passage, in this passage, uh, th their words were without knowledge. And I suggest to you that there's a lot of that that's going on today. There's a lot of empty talk. And that's why we, we use this video blog as a means of, of, of calling upon people to make sure that you're studying the Scripture itself. Listen to what the voice of the Holy Spirit says through the text, not through explanations. And so as a result, you have heard me say, if you've listened for any length of time, you have heard me say that this video blog should not be a substitute for your own study of the Scripture. Sometimes it's necessary for us to keep silent. Sometimes it's necessary for us to just shut up and listen. And that's what Job is being told here. And really, that's what his friends should have understood as well. Later on, we're going to get to the end of Job, and he's going to, uh, God is going to say, Job, pray for your friends and, uh, and, and bring these sacrifices to me because they have, uh, they have not spoken the truth about me. And so, so Job is given that particular opportunity to pray for them. So his, his words, uh, to, a, to a greater degree than his friend's words uh, were, uh, Job's words were those with knowledge and not without knowledge. But again, 
due to the frustration and all that Job had experienced, we need to understand the bewilderment that was going on in him. And, and sometimes when we are going through times of difficulty and we're bewildered and we don't understand what's going on and there's lots of confusion around us, sometimes the thing that we need to do is to stop and to quiet ourselves before the Lord, lay it before him. Sometimes he'll answer quickly. Sometimes it'll continue to be delayed. But recognize that he's the one who is going to give us the knowledge that we need. What Job's friends were sharing with him, I suggest to you, were certainly words without knowledge. Whether Job's words were or not, I can't say, but certainly his friends were. And so we need to be careful to make sure we're listening to what the Scripture says. Father, I ask you to give to us the insights, the understanding, the wisdom that we need and I thank you for your faithfulness and your grace to, to us. Continue to draw near to us and help us to listen to your voice as you speak. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day now.